Welcome back to the second part of this two video look at icy diamond thermal compound. In the first video we looked at icy diamond under the microscope to see what the diamond particulate looked like on a microscopic level, and also discussed the theoretics as to why or why not it may be able to scratch a heat sink block, dye, IC chip, or heat spreader. I suggest you going back and watching that video if you haven't already before watching this one. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But if you don't feel like watching it first, my findings were that the icy diamond particles were about 1 micron or less in size, which is about one fifth of a red blood cell. This is the equivalent of 14,000 grit sandpaper according to a chart by Geiswin Tools. Other sources said it could be as high as 22,000 grit though. The conversion is an imperfect science I suppose. Icy diamond allows for sizes up to 40 microns, which would be the equivalent of about 400 grit sandpaper. Still pretty fine, but may be possible to leave small scratches by itself. It should be noted though that in my observation I found none even remotely that big. I think the largest I seen was 2 to 3 microns, and most were 1 micron or less. Who knows though, there could be an odd tube with huge particles, I can't really say. Anyways, based off of my findings, I'd theorize it'd be extremely unlikely for Icy Diamond to significantly scratch anything by itself. I would be under the impression that it'd be much more likely the IC would high polish a surface rather than gouge it, but many individuals have reported scratching from using Icy Diamond than cleaning it off. So I wish to put my money where my mouth is and try to see if Icy Diamond will scratch or polish, and also compare it to a base in Arctic Silver 5. My testing parameters are quite simple. I took an old Pentium CPU and marked off four segments on it. Right hand top corner is Icy Diamond. Right hand bottom corner, Arctic Silver 5. Left top is base preserved and left bottom is base. So for this test I am going to take a dab of Icy Diamond and Arctic Silver 5 and put them in their respective corners and then rub a Q-tip with moderate pressure in one direction on them 100 times to see if there is notable scratching. For base preserved, nothing at all will be done. And for base, a Q-tip will be rubbed in the same way as on the thermal compound corners, but with no thermal paste on it. So first up, the Icy Diamond. You can see I did a moderate dab on the heat spreader and then rubbed it 100 times. Next up is the Arctic Silver 5. You might notice that the Icy Diamond corner is pretty polished but also has significant new scratches. So, should I stop the test right here and just conclude that my theory was wrong and that Icy Diamond scratches heat spreaders like mad? Not so quick. There is a reason I found this likely happens and it doesn't have to do with the Icy Diamond compound itself. In this picture I have completed the Arctic Silver 5 sample and the base Q-tip only test. You may notice that they all have picked up a polish but the diamond is the best. You may also notice the Icy Diamond appears to be the only one that scratched and it looks to have done it pretty badly. So test over right? IC equals scratches galore, rest don't scratch, call it a day. Actually not 100% true. Both the Arctic Silver 5 and the base Q-tip only test did introduce some new scratches but they definitely are less than that of the IC Diamond. But the point I want to make is that the IC Diamond scratches didn't seem to come from the IC Diamond compound itself. Where they were was in an area that I drug the tip of the thermal paste applicator across multiple times while trying to smear it. And later while trying to test it with the Q-tip, the cotton fell off and I had drugged the bare plastic stem across a few times before realizing. I'm not saying that the plastic scratched it. What I believe to have happened is the diamond stuck to the edges of the plastic and basically made a diamond tip cutting edge that allowed for the humble plastic to do significant damage. If this is true, I should be able to remove the variable of the plastic edges interfering by simply using a cloth. If I polish with a cloth, an icy diamond thermal compound, and new scratches are still present, then it's safe to assume that at least some particles in the tin are big enough to scratch the spreader. However, if I can polish it with the cloth and the icy diamond and not see significant new scratches introduced, it is likely that the issue isn't particle size itself, but like I said, the diamond coating edges and basically turning them into diamond enhanced cutting blades. So that's what I did. The same CPU polished with Icy Diamond in a soft cloth. I didn't see any new scratches show up that weren't already on the heat spreader. Actually on the contrary, the Icy Diamond helped to buff out some of the older, smaller scratches. One thing I am surprised here by is that the lettering stayed so well on the heat spreader. But it does seem to be engraved a good distance down so it might just be that. With the Icy Diamond I was able to achieve a mirror finish on the CPU in about 3 minutes. If the Icy Diamond by itself really scratched up the heat spreader, then this thing should be wrecked, not highly polished. 
I feel pretty confident that the icy diamond itself isn't scratching heat sinks, blocks, spreaders, but coating edges of stuff which allows said edges to scratch much easier. For example, a slight imperfection on your heat sink may become a diamond tip blade while sliding over your CPU with this stuff plopped on. Or maybe even a humble piece of dirt that gets mixed in might cause issues by having its scratching potential boosted by microscopic diamonds. But here, let me prove how badly this can boost something's ability to scratch. You can see that the chip had a mirror finish on it. Watch what happens if I drag the Icy Diamonds TIM applicator across it with a little Icy Diamond on the edge of it and a bit of pressure. That is right, you can see here that it's scratched up like mad. I know some of them might look like smudging, but it's not. They are deep enough that I can hook my nail in a lot of them, and the heat spreader in this picture has already been cleaned off. So with everything tested and parameters looked at, in my honest opinion, I don't think Icy Diamond will scratch CPUs, GPUs, heat sinks, water blocks, or heat spreaders by itself, unless maybe due to manufacturing defects in select cases where there is an errant fragment of atypically large diamond. I didn't see any evidence of that, but it always could be a possibility. It should be noted, however, Icy Diamond guarantees to not have fragments larger than 40 microns in it, which shouldn't do much damage even still. However, in my testing, I saw at best 2-3 to three micron particles, and most were one or less. The way I think it's likely most scratches from Icy Diamond occur is from the Icy Diamond coating edges of normally innocuous things such as plastic applicators, dirt particles, imperfections on the heat spreader or heat sink, block, etc., and by doing so it turns those normally harmless edges into diamond coated cutting edges. And to prove my point about the Icy Diamond by itself not probably being too harmful, I have my computer here that's had Icy Diamond on the CPU and the block for about the last year baked on by using rubbing alcohol and carefully patting it off most of the way and then you know very carefully rubbing off the rest of the soft cloth you can see that both my CPU and my water block haven't suffered any significant damage or really any damage at all from using the Icy Diamond. Anyways guys, thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video and found it interesting or useful, please show your support and drop a like and comment. Sub if you haven't already, and please consider supporting new videos on Patreon. And also thank you to my current Patrons for being so amazing, and thank you guys for watching. Bye!